what our slave masters gave our forefathers. We still carry those names. <coughs> In looks, when I went to Habibia, in my previous trips, Hanif Ali was a principal. He tells me, he said, look, he's taking me through the different classes. And he said, look, just watch the features of these children in the different classes. So I'm just scanning, Salaam Alaikum, and I'm, the children respond. I'm watching the features. Mm -hmm. Next class. Mm -hmm. Next class. Mm -hmm. From pure black to pure white. And there were group areas, if I was an inspector, they say, you, you should be in an African school. <laughs> and you, you should be in a white school. What the hell are you doing here? From pure black to pure white. Among us. Muslims, all. Then I go to Stellenbosch. There was a Mr. Gabriel. He was a teacher and we were talking. He takes me to his school, colored school. He didn't tell me anything, but I was doing the same thing. Scanning the children. Wallah, from pure black to pure white. Same, same. That means this, your looks can't give me any indication what you are. It's only if you have a kufia on, I said, no, this guy is a Muslim. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, the other man says the behavior. Can the colors understand anything about Islam? The Bushma in the Kalhari, you think he can understand anything about Islam? The Hotan talk, can he? No, backward people, ignorant people, what can they understand? That mentality prevailed in Spain. These pig eaters, the Spanish people, these wine bibbers, the Spanish people, what can they understand? That arrogance. I'm telling, I say, your forefathers could? Were your forefathers, I'm talking to the Arab. Were they worse than the Spanish people? Never. <coughs> your forefathers, the Arabs, of the Ayyamul Jahiliya, of the days of ignorance, before Islam, they married their stepmothers. Did the Spanish people do that? No. These Arabs, they were marrying their stepmothers. Father died, he inherited his wife as well. They buried their daughters alive. Did the Spanish people do that? No. You were drunkards, adulterers, gamblers, the worst of human creatures. That given the master historian describes the Arabs before Islam, he says the human brute, almost without sense, is poorly distinguished from the rest of the animal creation. The only thing that makes him different from the animal is the form. This form. Allah has made you in the best of form. Otherwise, animal and worse than animal. You, your forefathers. And Allah could change you through his book, his wahi, his revelation, the Quran. He can't change the Spanish people. No. For 800 years, you could do nothing. Look, the white man has done the job. In 300 years, he has Christianized the nation. This in Africa, South Africa has the biggest percentage of Christians in the whole of Africa. If Libya boasts the highest percentage of Muslims, South Africa boasts the highest percentage of Christians. The white man, he did the job. Among the, you carry colored identity, among all those who carry colored identity, the majority of them are Christians. The African majority are Christians. The white majority are Christians. This is an ocean of Christianity. He did the job. We, in 800 years, we couldn't make a scratch. Your pride, your arrogance, you didn't want to share. Allah says, you don't want to do your job? He said, Fata Rabbas, you wait. And they waited. You know, the fools, they waited. Allah says, wait. <laughs> you see, you're following Allah's command. No, that wait was not waiting. It's a warning. So look out. So they start looking out. Another fool. <laughs> Their language is like that at times. You say something, but you mean something else. Like a Frenchman learning English. He was trying to learn English, mastering English grammar. And he's sitting in a high rise building, skyscraper, <coughs> sitting near the window, and he's trying to memorize his lessons. And he hears a shout. Look out! So he looked out, and a big crazy. <laughs> Lucky he didn't die. The guy said, what the hell is this? I'm told, look out, so I look out. He said, no, when we English people say, look out, we pass off. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even look out, pass off. <laughs> he understand, pass off. That's Africa, pass off. He means look out. Pass off, it's, it's a warning. Am I right? It's a warning. See, that's a warning. Look out means be careful. 
beyond that. So he looked up, gets it in the head. Allah says, Fatah Abbas, you wait. <coughs> this is not waiting. It's a warning. Like you bully some little fellow here, and he tells you, uncle, you wait. I'll bring my brother. And his brother, you know, by reputation, is the biggest hooligan in this area. <coughs> in Weinberg, in Weinberg. Yeah, the biggest hooligan in Weinberg is his brother. I'm asking, will you wait? Do you wait for him? He said, do wait, uncle. I'll bring my brother and come. And you will wait. When you know his brother is the biggest hooligan in this area. Biggest bully. You wait. No, no, he's telling you to wait, but you run for dear life. <laughs> because you know what to expect if he comes. So Allah says, Fatah Abbas, you wait. Hatta yati Allah bi amri until Allah's decision comes about for your destruction. You wait for that. They waited for 800 years. Allah says, you wait and they waited. Allah is a subu, he is long suffering, patient. 800 years he gave you a chance to come right. And 800 years you didn't do the job. So he says, yes, tabdil qawman ghayrakum. He will substitute in your place another people. Fumma la yakum wa mthalakum. And they won't be like you and he displaced them. Finished. Gone. Gone to the dogs. There was not one Muslim left after 800 years to give the azan. We are here for 300 years. Can you imagine after 300 years, wiped out by a man, not one guy left in this country to give the azan. Worse than that, after 800 years, not one fellow left in that country to give the azan. This is the punishment. You don't do your job, say change, get out of the way, you're rubbish. You don't do your job, you don't deserve to be khair ummati. You come to Baghdad, Samarkand, Bukhara, and the Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, veritable fairyland. They created a veritable fairyland. The type of scenes, the buildings, <coughs> and the gardens and the fountains that existed, you can't reproduce them anymore except on the screen. On screen you can do anything, you know, in the films. In real life, no more. On the borders with the Mongols. Barbarians. Will they deliver the message of Islam? No, no. <laughs> what can we understand about Islam? Same with the Buddha. What can we understand? The Bushman. What can we understand? The Bhagavad What can we understand? That's a mentality. Same. What can we understand about Islam? <laughs> Barbarians. Barbarians. You? Were you better than they? Your forefathers? No. Allah's kalam could change you, but can't change them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Allah says, Fatah Abbas, you wait. And they waited. At the very hands of these very people, Allah destroyed them. The same barbarians, they put the Muslims in the dark. Destroyed the Islamic empire utterly. That even today, the shocks of that defeat is still not gone out of, out of our blood. The shock of those defeats is not gone out yet. All these problems, problems are that, that started there. The shocks of those defeats. They conquered us and they demoralized us utterly. <coughs> History tells us, I'm ashamed even to tell you. History tells us that these Mongols, these barbarians, one, one guy, one guy alone, one guy, he can lead a hundred Muslims like sheep and goats. One man alone can say, come on, go! A whole lot of guys, no one! And he like shep shepherding them. One guy can do it to a hundred. And it is told to us, history tells us, that the Muslims somehow, you know, collided with one of these Mongols in the street. And the Mongol lost his temper. He said, bend down, I'll chop off your head. The Muslim bent down. He says, I forgot my sword at home. He says, you wait, I'm coming. <laughs> You wait, I'm coming. And the man went home, he brought his sword, the Muslim is still bent down, he's still waiting. So utterly demoral. You can't even run away. This, you reach that stage, you didn't do your job. Now comes the punishment. That the man tells you, you bend down and wait till I get my sword to chop off your head and you can't even run away. I feel ashamed even to tell people. Say, look, this is what we had come to. Muslim, Muslims. Why? You didn't do your job. Allah says, Yes, tabdil qawman ghayrakum. He will substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakum salakum. And he substituted them. By these very Mongols, the Turks, they, later on they became Muslims. And they started helping the Muslims. But, 
referring the first instance